lunar eclipses, uh, especially total lunar eclipses, are really exciting sky-watching opportunities for astronomers, families, uh, really all enthusiasts around the world. Uh, what can people looking to see an eclipse expect to see? Well, during a total lunar eclipse, um, during totality, the moon turns this uh, copper red color. Um, it's weird and it's beautiful um, and unusual, and it's caused by um, light refracting through the atmosphere of the Earth. Um, so if you're on the moon, you're seeing every sunrise and sunset all around the Earth, um, and that light sort of filters into the shadow. Um, it's a way for the Earth to sort of reach out and touch its nearest neighbor. Definitely. So, so people, it might be more colorful than people are expecting. Yeah, exactly. And the color can vary from one lunar eclipse to another. It depends on uh, how close the moon is to the center of the shadow. Um, it depends on how much uh, dust and aerosols and all kinds of things are in the Earth's atmosphere. Um, and it's something that um, amateur astronomers can participate in, uh, sort of rating the, the darkness of the moon and the color of the moon, um, because that gives us some insight into what causes the color. We don't fully understand it. So, so in, in that we can't fully understand it, it seems that we also can't fully expect exactly what's going to happen, but we have a general idea of what we're going to see. That's right. Um, so it's hard to predict. I mean, we know some of the factors like um, depth in, in the shadow, but we don't know uh, exactly what stuff in the atmosphere, the Earth's atmosphere, um, creates some of that color. So the more we observe these and the more we record them and, and are careful about you know, deciding what color it is, the better we'll be able to understand and maybe predict in the future what color they'll be. Definitely. So how long do lunar eclipses typically last and why do they last so much longer than solar eclipses? <laughs> well, the Earth's shadow is so much wider than the moon's shadow. Um, yeah, the great thing about lunar eclipses is that, you know, an entire half of the Earth can witness them. Um, it just the nighttime half gets to see gets to see it. You don't have to be uh, in a very specific place the way you do with a solar eclipse. Um, and, uh, you know, with the, the shadow being as wide as it is, um, the eclipses will vary depending on whether the moon is, is just skirting the edge of the shadow or going right through the center of it. Um, so, uh, and maybe the inconvenient part of a lunar eclipse is that it happens at night and sometimes it's early in the morning and it's three o'clock in the morning and you're like, I don't know if I want to do this. Um, but I think it's always worth getting up to see. Um, I, I, every time I have an opportunity to see one, I'm, I'm up no matter what time it is. Absolutely. Uh, now, I'm curious, it's a little bit of a more oddball question, but could you predict what a lunar eclipse might look like from the surface of the moon? Actually, uh, Apollo 12 um, witnessed something very much like a lunar eclipse. The, the space capsule passed through the Earth's shadow. Um, and you may know that uh, Alan Bean was, uh, became a painter after he came back to Earth, and, and he painted this several times. Um, Alan's paintings are sometimes uh, kind of impressionistic, so the colors are um, more interesting than the reality. But, um, uh, but it, what he captured was the brilliant ring of, you know, bright sunrises and sunsets, how bright that is, how um, visually interesting that is. I think it would be great if um, we had astronauts on the moon to witness this. Uh, also during Apollo 15, um, there was a plan to use the camera on the rover to watch um, a total lunar eclipse. It was going to happen uh, a couple of weeks after the astronauts left. But um, one of the one of the gears that allowed the the camera to point um, wasn't working after they left, and so we missed that opportunity. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's a, it, you know, it, it's a it would be a cool reason to go back just to be there during a lunar eclipse and see what the Earth looks like. Definitely. Uh, now, so the rover, you know, the rover's camera, things didn't go according to plan, but we do still have spacecraft orbiting the moon. Um, there's China's Chang'e 4 rover still on the moon. Uh, what might these spacecraft see during an eclipse? Like, what, what might it look like to them? I Well, I work with Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, and uh, it's a solar-powered mission. So one of the one of the aspects of a lunar eclipse for LRO is that its power gets turned off, basically. Um, 
you know, LRO orbits the moon every two hours. Uh, it goes through nighttime every 45 minutes. So there's a battery on board and that kind of gets it through the night side and, and then it charges back up. But during lunar eclipses, a lot of times it'll come around from the night side and the sun still isn't there. So it has to run on battery power for, you know, a couple of extra hours. And so LRO has to make preparations for that. Usually most of the instruments get turned off. Um, and the things that they leave on are like the heater, um, something important to keep all the stuff from freezing. Uh, but it's a, it's a challenging sort of operational thing that LRO does. So it's not, it's not having the same kind of fun that we have on the earth. It's, it's actually having to protect itself. Um, yeah. So I don't, I don't know of any, um, any missions like LRO that have actually turned to the earth during an eclipse and taken a picture of it. Cause I think that would be really cool. Uh, right. I'd like to see it. Right. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, so I, I just have one more question for you, uh, you know, leaving it off on something fun to you. What's the most amazing part of watching a lunar eclipse? Well, I always, I mean, I'm a little biased because I work with moon data all the time. Um, so I'm always going outside and sort of looking up and, and, spending at least a couple of seconds and contemplating the moon and, and what it means. But a, a lunar eclipse is such a spectacular visual event that you get caught up in it. Um, you know, during the partial phases, you see the moon sort of getting slowly eaten away um, over the course of maybe an hour, an hour and a half. And then suddenly it's, it's quite a bit darker, but it's also this deep red color. And, and you're like, it, it's a it's a chance for you to sort of think about your place in the in the cosmos you know uh, this this alignment of the sun and the earth and the moon um, spending a, just a a little bit of time thinking about how amazing that is and how cool it is and you are in a very specific place to be able to see it um, you know aside from just the, the visual beauty of it I, I'd like thinking about that aspect of it 